This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. For our Lord is great and greatly to be praised. To God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and merciful Lord, we thank you that you hear us whenever we pray. And you say, oh God, that you will answer us by and by. So here we are, oh God, your children, called by you, anointed by you, and blessed by you. We come to you and worship because that's what we are made to do. And God, as we worship and glorify your holy name, we pray that you may be magnified and the devil may be horrified because you are great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised. So, oh God, we lift up our hands and worship and praise you. We open up our mouths and glorify you with song and word. And God, we even stomp our feet in the sanctuary, in our homes, in our cars, because you are worthy to be praised. And oh God, even the things that lay on our hearts that concern us, God, you perfect them. We know that there are perilous things happening in our world, but God, you are greater and you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So we lay those things in your hand even right now. And we know that they are covered by your blood, by your power, by your strength, by your love, by your joy, and by your hope. So God, now as we worship you, we pray, oh God, that you would just speak powerfully through your manservant that will give us the word that comes from your lips through him to our hearts that will lead and direct us during these times of uncertainty. Because God, we know that you are in control and there is none like you and there is none besides you. God, you are Lord over our lives and over this earth. So have your way in this worship time, we pray. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And glory be to God. to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know what forever means. Why don't you put your hands together right there in your home, in your living room, in the kitchen, wherever you may find yourself in the presence of God, knowing that God loves you forever. Come on, pray with me. God, we thank you that you are a forever kind of God. You are a forever kind of God that sits high and looks low, and you forever give us chance after chance after chance. And on this Sunday morning, God, we are grateful that you've allowed us to see a new day, to see a new week, and God, to be a part of something new. And we pray that as we continue to be in your presence, God, that you would just make yourself new and right with us today. God, now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that all of God's children say amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things God has done, is doing, 
and promised to do along the way. We give God glory that you've joined us today on this Sabbath morning. Thanking God for all of those that make this service possible. Dr. Monroe and the musicians, thank you. Wow, those singers were off the hook, weren't they? Come on, put your hands together in the chat box. Put a emoji up, thumbs up. It's good to be in the Lord's house with singers. Amen. Now, we've had them before. We had them before, but it's a different experience now. So I just want to thank God for them. Pastor Lanza, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back from, uh, from study leave and all those great things that God has poured into your life. To our AV team ministry, to our centurions, to our COVID team that keeps the church safe, to our floor manager and all of those that contribute to make CN Jenkins a wonderful place to worship. I am, uh, it's a plum pleasing pleasure and a privilege to stand before you one more time. Today, my friends, if you have your word, I invite you to turn uh, with me to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19. We'll be reading to you from verses 1 through 9 from a New Living Translation. And I do want to bring back uh, verse 5 from the NIV translation, but it is our tradition as we read the word that we will seek God's presence to speak to us the word. Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 1, here's what the word of God says. Now Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. And there was a man there named Zacchaeus. Uh, he was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He, he tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up and Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I call your attention to verse 5 of this pericope, again, reading it to you from an NIV translation so that we can hear this one word that, that is not listed in the NLT, but I want you to hear it. And if you pick it up, you go ahead and put a thumbs up right there in the chat box. Here's what verse 5 says. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And my friends, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I want to lift up this text as we preach the second part of our five-part installment of a series of sermons on the five love languages. And today, y'all, I want to lift up and preach this subject, quality time, quality time. There's a story told of a college professor who found herself surprised one day when a young man appeared at her door, a young man to which she had not seen in over eight years, standing there at the doorway with a smile on his face. The look, y'all, was filled with joy and excitement, and it had a story to tell. For you see, when she had last seen him again some eight years prior, uh, he had decided that life was empty. Life did not have a whole lot to offer. And he had developed, shall we say, a bad habit, several bad habits, habits of smoking weed and drinking liquor and having sex with whosoever will. Develop habits, y'all, that were destructive to his mental, physical, and emotional body. 
At age 19, he began to give up, or shall we say, gave up on life. And not only did he give up on life, but those around him had given up on him. But now, y'all, on this day, seeing him look differently, now on this day, noticing there was a glee in his eye and a smile on his face, not only did he look clean and was he sober clean, but he looked hopeful and he looked helpful. Not only did this young man look like he had life back into him, but he looked like he was ready to add value and pour life back into somebody else. And she could not help but to say, son, what happened? Son, what caused the change? Son, what did you get into and what got into you? And y'all with glee and exuberant surprise, a young man said, well, you see, in my many years of wondering, I discovered an amazing thing. And that is God put an emptiness inside of me that can only be filled with almighty God. He said, God put an emptiness inside of me, in my soul, in my mind, and in my spirit in order to draw me closer to almighty God. And he confessed, but y'all, I, I kept on and I, I repeated time and time again trying to fill that emptiness with some temporary external things. Somebody know what I'm saying. I, I kept trying to fill that void, fill that space with things on the outside that look good, that make me feel good, but would not last a long time. And he said, I then realized that the only high that would last is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm talking to somebody this Sunday morning because I want you to hear what I'm saying. The, 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 the young boy spoke to the teacher and he says, I realized that the only excitement that was ecstatic was an excitement in the excellence of Almighty God. I, I realized, he said, that, that the only joy that would last would be a joy spent in the word of Almighty God. He says, I realize that, that, I've, got, uh, that I've got to spend more time with God than, than, than I've spent with the world. And, and I got to drop my kickstand here on this Sunday morning and say to you, my friends, that, that when you start to spend more time with God, God will spend more time with you. When, when you start to open up yourself to the word of Almighty God, I guarantee you God's going to drop a word in your spirit. When you start to say this is the day the Lord has made I shall rejoice and be glad when you open up your beautiful brown eyes or your or your beautiful whatever color contact you got eyes when you open them up and say God I want you to have control to take you to take charge of this day I guarantee you God will order your steps guide your thoughts control your tongue and make you an instrument of his peace and you see what happens y'all is that this young boy helped us realize a very important lesson at the onset of this sermon. And that is, my friends, whatever you have done in the past with some help from Almighty God, it can be undone. Wherever you have gone in your past with the grace of Almighty God, it is in your rearview mirror. And I want somebody to know whatever you have said in the past, yes, words do hurt, but I guarantee you God has a way of giving you the peace that passes all understanding. If you got some peace in your life, Will you type right there in the chat box, peace. If you can't spell peace, put a capital P right there. Because if you don't know that, put the peace sign right where you want people to know that God has given you some peace. God has calmed your storm. God has picked you up. God has turned you around. God has given you a reason to take that second breath. Now, 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 notice, 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 notice. Notice you can't take the second breath until you exhale from the first. And somebody need to hear me this Sunday morning because God is speaking to you right now. God is saying, I need you to exhale some things from your past. I need you to blow out some things from your church, from your past. I need you to let go of some things because God wants to fill you up with some quality time, quality time. Come on, let me see if I can help you understand this second principle of the love languages. Five love languages to which we are lifting up this series of sermons from Arthur Gary Chapman in his book, The Five Love Languages. And he, he basically, a love language means a way to communicate to say, I love you. 
a love language, a love language. That's your go-to uh, love language. That's your default uh, love language. That is the thing that, that people can come in your presence. And they don't have to say a whole lot, but you know they're communicating with you. The, the love language, y'all, is an instant registry of connecting with somebody that you love. Not only is it saying, this is how I love you, but this is how I receive love. And in short, these five love languages are about the way to feel love. They are different for everybody, and it doesn't mean that you can't experience all five. It just simply means when you take the test, you may have one that's more dominant than the other. What are the love languages? Affirmation. We preached on it last week. Words do matter. So if your love language is affirmation of words, that that means people can say things to you and you just bubble over like you a kid at Toys R Us. If your love language is gifts, that means that I can go to, I can go to Tiffany's or I can go to the dollar store. As long as I put a ribbon on it in your name, you respond to gifts. Your love language may be act of service. Act of service, that is simply what we say. Making my lunch, running some bath water, washing the dishes, putting two dollars worth of gas in the car. I can't go far with it, but the thought is what's important and the up physical touch, physical touch. Somebody going to send me a thank you note for that one, physical touch. But here it is. That is a love language, love language. And today we're talking about quality time, quality time. Type QT right there in the chat. Now, I ain't advocating for you to get something at the QT. I'm just giving you an easy way to correspond back to us. You see, this is how we have call and response. So you just type QT right there in the chat box. That's quality time. And what is quality time? Quality time, y'all, is dedicating our full attention and dedicated time to the one we love. Quality time, that means sitting together and connecting with the ones you love. Quality time, that means walking hand in hand. Okay, I don't want to go there too quickly. It, it means hanging out with folk after a long day of work. Quality time. It, it means y'all taking a road trip that might end up on memory lane. Come on, somebody help me preach. Quality time. It involves committing and, and understanding the other person's needs by you spending time with them. It focuses on the specialities that people have as you spend time with them. Quality time, y'all. When it comes to our relationship with Almighty God, this is an asset to grow in your faith with quality time. What you saying, Reverend? I want you to recognize that, again, the more time you spend with God, the more time God will spend with you. And this text that we're looking at today about Zacchaeus and his encounter with Jesus is really wrapped around quality time. Quality time, y'all. Don't miss this. It's one of the easiest easiest love languages to apply, but don't, don't miss it. It's sometimes one of the easiest to abuse, what you're saying, because simply put this way, if your partner's primary love language is quality time, it means they feel love the most the more time you spend with them. Okay, if your partner's love language is quality time, that means that if you spend quality time with them, they receive it the most. But don't get it twisted because in essence, that sounds like a no-brainer, but not so fast because I've learned, y'all, that being around folk is not enough. It's not just being in their presence, it's being present while you're present. Ooh, I like that. Let me say that again. It's not just being showing up to say I'm here, but putting that phone down when you are really there. It's not just saying that I'm going to listen when you're trying to focus on something else. It means you got my eyes and you got my ears. Quality time, y'all, is, is, is our way of just being in the presence and giving folk attention. Matter of fact, I believe, Dr. Monroe, that it might not be called quality time. It might be quality attention, quality 
attention because that is exactly what God is calling us to live out our lives and to witness to have attention. Come to attention and speak the truth. Come to attention and stand for justice. Come to attention and call out the evils that we live around in this world. Come to attention and help people realize there is a difference between a taser and a gun. Come to attention and help people realize is that there are more people brown and black folk who are dying of the disease and more brown and black folk who are not getting the, the, the vaccine that we have to come to attention and let the society, let the people in the power know that it's no equality here. We need to do more to give uh, health care to everybody else. Come to attention. You've got to give some quality time and quality attention. But now, but now I, 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 I want you to understand is that in order to really apply, apply quality time, I'm going to give you three B's, three B's right there. Type three B's in the chat box because here they come to you. Quality time is best applied and best and, and best, best applied and we say best supplied by the three B's. What are they? Be deliberate, be mentally present, and be affectionate. Okay, I know you're going to write me a thank you note for that one, so let me just give them to you one more time. Be deliberate, be mentally present, and be affectionate. You see, when I say be deliberate, I, I'm saying that you have to be intentional about doing what you're supposed to do in the presence of the one you are speaking to. See, when Jesus, according to the text, came to the place, came to the spot, he looked up deliberately and he called Zacchaeus down. When Jesus entering Jerusalem, get this, y'all, just about two weeks before he would go up on a cross, he invited Zacchaeus to come down from a tree. I'm going to come back to that later. Jesus, y'all, was deliberate on taking this route into Jerusalem, going to Jericho, so that he would be deliberate and and calling a sinner to salvation. Jesus was deliberate, y'all, in reaching the needs of somebody that society had put out, and society says, we don't want anything to do with you. Understand the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was the tax collector, but not only the tax collector, the Bible says, only where in the Bible where he's recorded as the chief tax collector. Zacchaeus was the H-N-I. Okay, Zacchaeus, you didn't get no higher than that. But understand, though he had money's mammy, though he had status, Zacchaeus was short physically, but he still wanted to see Jesus. Am I talking to somebody on this Sunday morning that regardless of the money you have in the bank, regardless of the size of your house, regardless of what you have in your closet, regardless what's in the garage, you still want to see Jesus. You still want to be with the one who saves. You still want to be with the one who redeems. You still seek for some peace in your soul, in your mind. Zacchaeus had a deliberate instruction. The command was, Zacchaeus, come down matter of fact not now but quick oh I like that I like that because when God answers your prayer God comes with a quickness about it God comes with an exactness about it God comes at the moment when you are ready now old school we know how we say it it's not he does, may not come when you want him but he's always what on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. And, and the deliberate part about quality time is you have to be deliberate about sharing that time with the ones you are with. The command is that Christ was interested in Zacchaeus just like I believe our Lord is interested in you and your salvation right now. Jesus says I must abide in your house. In your house, in your house, in your house. The first part of the week, Brother L, you remember I sent the email out. The sermon was really going to be called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. But the clip I wanted to show was not one that was PG-13. It was, it was a good clip, but it wasn't a Sunday morning clip. Amen. So if you want to Google it, you can find out. But, but the, if you know old school, the, 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 the genesis behind Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was simply about a couple that fell in love deliberately, but society did not accept them. 
a couple that wanted to be together eternally in holy matrimony, but their parents had a difference of opinion. A couple that were that were that that, that was love, because love will make you do some things that you don't normally want to. Okay, I'm not the only one here who who will confess that love made you do some things that. You didn't think you would do. Love made you go some places. You told that you wouldn't go. Love has made you buy some things you could not afford. Love will make you say some things you wish you could take back. Love will make you stay with some. Oh, let me help somebody. You see, the, 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 the story of, of guess who's coming to dinner was similar in terms of Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus' invitation was, Jesus says, I must be at your house. Now notice what the text says. It says, as Zacchaeus came down with deliberate action, he came down with the quickness and with excitement. Well, I like that. I like that, Minister Donna, because what that says to me is that sometimes when Jesus gives the invitation, that's not time for us to say, Lord, let me think about it. Sometimes when God gives you the breakthrough, Miss P, that's not the time for you to say, Lord, let me do some things. Is that not what the word says, Pastor Lanson, when, when Jesus says to the man, you have to go and do it quickly and, and come follow me. And the man says, well, I got to go bury my father. And he, Jesus was not being disrespectful. He just said, let the dead bury the dead because what I have for you is life and life more abundantly. Is that not what Jesus says to many of us right now when we make excuse on top of excuse Jesus is simply for us to come quick and do it with some excitement 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 I I, I got I got to give the illustration y'all I heard my friend Pastor Ralph West says and, and he wasn't hating on preachers he just simply says sometimes when he's preaching he doesn't necessarily say uh, 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 slap your neighbor three times or give somebody a high five and Ralph West says he doesn't have to Ask people to, to punch your navel and, and shake them and rock them and rock them and roll them and, and all those kinds of things. He says, now, he's not hating on preachers, nor am I hating on preachers, because you've heard me say, give your neighbor a high five. But here's the lesson he said, and I got to share it with you. He says, if God hadn't done anything in your life, then you probably ain't going to say nothing. But if God has answered a prayer, if God has opened up a door, if God has made a way out of no way, if God has brought you through in the midnight hour, if God has lifted you up from being down, and if God has been your Lord and your Savior, you ain't got to have no cheerleader telling you to pump them up, pump them up, pump them up. You to say, I just lift my hands up in the air, wave them like I just don't care because God is so good to me. Oh, y'all, hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. You have to have some excitement about yourself. What happened? There was a command, but also there was a conversion. Verse 6 says, Zacchaeus came down from the tree and received him joyfully. Zacchaeus was hungry, y'all, and searching for the truth. The story, the story, the story of Zacchaeus, y'all, only recorded in the book of Luke. Only there telling him being the chief tax collector. Now, what was the problem of him being the chief tax collector? Well, you see, he was working for the Romans, working for the Caesar. He was charging the Jews, charging his home people, charging his own folk, exorbitant taxes. And the way that Caesar worked, Caesar was just happy as long as he got his. C Caesar told Zacchaeus, you charge the people enough to pay Rome. You can break you off a little piece if you want to. And Zacchaeus, as the chief tax collector, y'all, he had perfected breaking him off a little piece. Zacchaeus, as the chief tax collector, had perfected ripping off his own kind. Zacchaeus, as the chief tax collector, had perfected stealing from the people who looked like him. Zacchaeus, as the chief tax collector, y'all, was one who would, as they say, literally walk over his grandmama's grave just to get a dollar. Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, y'all, was one who was robbing his own. That's why the people murmured when Zacchaeus came down out the tree and they looked at Jesus, God God's son, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior of the world, going to the home of a tax collector. No, Jesus, you done stepped in the wrong company. No, Jesus, you done started hanging out with the wrong folk. Look at Zacchaeus, street 
thug Zacchaeus, Robin Zacchaeus, sell out Zacchaeus, two faced. How many of us have made those same kind of judgments on people who didn't look like us when we were sitting in church? How many of us have rolled our eyes and sucked our teeth and wasn't no meat in between them and because so-and-so was a chief drug, I mean chief prostitute, I mean chief gangbanger. You see, the love of God is so love, so great and so, so inviting, y'all. It does not matter what you have done in your past. God really wants you to be now in the present. See, the Bible tells us that not only should you be delivered, but here it is. The Bible says you also have to be mentally present. Mentally present to recognize that Jesus has given you an invitation. Your quality time with somebody has to be mentally present. I am giving you my attention. I am giving you my all in all. I'm not going to let the world distract me from those things that are happening. I love the way Pastor lifted up the prayer today in the midst of a pandemic. She reminded us that we have to keep holding our hands to God's unchanging hand. We have to keep believing that God is is going to do everything that God said God would do. We have to believe that we, uh, we, we, we have to stay mentally present. And, and I got to explain to somebody what mentally present mean. It, it means that when you're going to spend some quality time with somebody, your mind and your heart must be with them. Come on, OJs, your body's here with me, but your mind's on the up. No, no, no. You got to be mentally here with me. Quality time means that I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to cut on you. I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut away from it and I'm going to court my attention towards you. Remember y'all, it's not just the time, it's the attention that's most important in the time. Let me see if I can explain it to you this way. You see, if, if you are skimming emails through your telephone while you and me are trying to have a conversation, you ain't mentally present. If, if you're watching television over my shoulder while we trying to have dinner, we, you are not mentally present, okay? If you on the beach and some jet centerfold walks by or some Denzel Morris chestnut walks by, you better not look. You better keep your eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help somebody. You see, mentally present means is that, is that, that I'm going to do what God calls me to do and go what God calls me to go and say what God calls me to say and be what God calls me to be. I'm going to have some quality time. I, I, I'm going to spend so much time with God that I'm, I'm in the words of, of, of Eric, but I can make you put your phone down. I'm excited about the Lord. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I can't wait to feast upon his word. I don't care what's on television, what's on the radio, what's on the CD player. I can't wait to get into the presence of Almighty God. He feeds me when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's bread when I need something to eat. I got to give my full attention, mentally present to Almighty God. Oh, okay, let me, let me, let me close because here's, here's the last thing about quality time is, is that you've got to be affectionate, affectionate, affectionate. You see, that's where the conversion part came to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was converted because of the affection of Jesus Christ. Jesus did not go into Zacchaeus' house, Miss Cynthia, and give him a new member orientation class. <laughs> Jesus did not go in Miss Miller and start to give him a book of order lecture. Jesus just went to the man's house and as the man saw the grace of Almighty God, the man says, I got to do better. I got to repent. I got to give back. I got to repay. And somebody need to hear me this Sunday morning because God is simply wanting to come into your presence, not to condemn, not to condole, but God wants to come into your presence to offer you grace. 
God wants to come into your presence to offer you a second chance. God wants to come into your presence to offer you a way for you to get up. You see, Zacchaeus experienced repentance because of an invitation. An invitation to come down, but it was only at the expense of Jesus going up. Zacchaeus experienced repentance and a new way of life because of God's grace. Not because of anything he had done. Matter of fact, what he had done should have sent him straight to hell. But by the grace of Almighty God, Zacchaeus received a second chance. Zacchaeus y'all was condemned, shall we say, to, to, to live eternity in fire, but by God's grace. You see, the good news, y'all, is that because Zacchaeus came down, Jesus could go up. And I gotta speak to somebody this Sunday morning, because God is telling you to come down. Come down off your high horse. Come down off of thinking you're better than other folk. Come down off of thinking you're all, you can do it all by yourself. Jesus said, if you come down, I will go up. And if I go up, I'm going to take you up. And if I take you up, I'm going to lift you up. And if I lift you up, I'm going to pick you up. And if I pick you up, oh my goodness, you got to understand, a rising tide lifts up all ships in the harbor. And somebody this Sunday morning, God is getting ready to rise the tide so you can go up. All you got to do is come and listen. Let God order your steps. Let God control your talk. Let God control your mind. Let God control your spirit. Let God control your decisions quality time quality time quality time and that's all we're asking that's all we're asking that you will have quality time with the Lord quality time with Jesus quality time with those around you I don't know if that's your love language or not but I want to pray that you will now practice some quality what does that mean that, that means that one I want you to start spending some time with the Lord Spend time in prayer. Spend time. Spend time on your knees. Spend time in the word. I want you to spend some time with other believers. Yes, it's one thing to be around non-believers, but it's a greater thing to be around believers. Believers can encourage you. Spend some quality time with believers. I want you to start adding value to folk. That goes back to last week's sermon. Uh, speak some words of encouragement to somebody. Let them know that they are beautiful and they are energetic and, and they are life-giving. Whatever it is, just give words of encouragement to them. But I want you to spend some time building your relationship with the Lord. So that's, that's really our prayer today. Our prayer that you will grow in your faith for week two as we talk about the five love languages. The tweet for the week is faith is about relationship and not religion. And don't forget those three B's of quality time. Be deliberate, be mentally present, and be affectionate. If y'all want to learn more or stay connected throughout the week, make sure you follow the Instagram at cnjenkinspc. Go on the website at www.cnjenkins.org or you can visit the Facebook CN Jenkins page. Have a great week. Friends, I thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. Thank you again for your prayer and support of this ministry. And if you made a decision to grow in the Lord, Pastor Lance and Dr. Carol are right there in the chat box right now. Let's indicate that you are seeking a stronger walk with God. We're here at the church. Call us. We will answer the phone, pray with you, whatever it takes to help you grow in your faith. Thank you so much for supporting the church, your ministry, for being present, praying for those who continue to take food out on Tuesdays, those who continue to drop by the church uh, to be involved in ministries. Our youth are doing a phenomenal job. Don't forget the video that you saw is going to be shown again. It really lifts us up. So we got to support that, support our youth. We thank you for joining. Now, don't forget, don't forget, if you've got teenagers, there's a teenage service coming on. There's a children's service coming on following this one. Share, like, whatever it takes for you to share this gospel message. I want you to put a major hand clap right there in the chat box for that wonderful choir we had this Sunday morning. They were just off the chain again. I think I'm going to invite them back. Yes, I am. I want them to come back. That's our TV choir. I've been, try I've been saying that for 29 years. We finally got us a TV choir. So y'all pray, 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 pray for my humility. Because once I get a TV choir, I want an airplane. No, I don't. I mean, I'm just joking with you. Here we go. Here we go. You know I love you. You know I'm praying for you. I look forward to worshiping with you again. Y'all have a wonderful Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>